We next move on to stop number four, Jubbergate. Retrace your steps along Aldwark, taking the first right along St. Andrew Gate. Along the way, you will pass by Spen Lane, the location of Benedict's palatial residence. Continue on past the shambles and the Newgate market stalls until you reach the large open Parliament Street. You have just walked along Jubbergate, and the street name is on the wall near the Newgate market sign. Find a place near the fountain or under one of the shady trees and hear more about the relevance of Jubbergate to the history of Jewish York. This lane is called Jubbergate, and though well travelled by visitors to York, it receives little notice amid the masses of shoppers and sightseers that use Jubbergate in walking between Parliament Street and the Shambles. Though the buildings standing here now are of much later construction, 13th century deeds for property along Jubbergate are still held by York Minster, the Merchant Adventurers Hall and York City Archives. The earliest of these deeds, dating to around 1249, refers to Jubbergate by its earlier name, Brettgate. However, Brettgate was also used as a street name elsewhere in York. The confusion this may have caused could partially account for the street's name change in later deeds, and a deed of 1280 is called Jubretgat, with a slightly different version, Jubretagata, appearing in deeds of 1287 and 1302. The name Bretgatter was formed by joining two separate words. Bret comes from Old English and Old Norse words meaning Britons, while Gatter is the Old Norse word for street or road. You may have noticed that York has several streets with the ending Gatter or gate. Many of these date back to Scandinavian rule in York. Bretgatter literally meant Street of the Britons. The street's name was changed sometime between 1249 and 1280 with the addition of a Middle English prefix, Jewa. The added prefix would indicate that Jewish homes and businesses were once prominent here. Although we have no other surviving evidence of Jewish occupation along Jubergate, the added Jew prefix strongly suggests that this was the case. Furthermore, Jubergate would have been a convenient location for York's medieval Jewish community. The medieval street originally extended to Corny Street, where could be found the community synagogue as well as the homes of other 12th and 13th century Jews. Were Jewish residents of York living and working along Jubbergate at the time of the Jewish massacre in 1190? Did surviving or newly arrived Jews occupy this lane in the following 13th century when the street's name was changed from Bretgatter to Jubretgat? Or was this name change based on local memories about Jews who had once lived in the neighbourhood? Without textual or archaeological evidence, we can only speculate. Perhaps someday new evidence may arise that tells us more about Jubbergate and its place in the lives of medieval York's Jewish community.